Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video I want to try to, in a condensed form, explain to you the door building process on a convertible beetle. I've been getting this uh, question a lot and we're working on a convertible right now, the 70 project that you see here. And uh, you guys know I did a door build video for 64 and earlier beetles and 65 and later beetles. Uh, so I want to talk to you about the process here. It is a little bit of a different animal, but if you do follow the processes of uh, how I build the doors on the, on the earlier cars or on the earlier videos that I've done before on the sedan, you can kind of follow this to some degree. It is a little bit different. The steps are a little bit different, but uh, I just want to get in here and show you exactly what we had to do. Uh, to get this to work right. So uh, first and foremost, just like the other doors on the sedan, you have to do, you have to get this latch in first, okay? That is the first and foremost thing to do because that's, that's got to go into the door and come over here before the guide bar that goes into the door here has to get inserted. Okay, so if you did take that out, I'll see if I can open this up here. Maybe you can look down in there. There is a guide bar. I don't know if you can really see in there. Probably not, but there's a guide bar where the glass, okay, rides up along here, okay, and that bolts here and bolts behind here. This is a, a, a 10 millimeter headed, a 6 millimeter threaded bolt, uh, and that holds that rod, that guide down and to there. Now, the, the tough part is, is getting this the rod to, the, for the, the door opener here attached to the mechanism. Same way on the earlier mechanisms for the sedan, it's the same hookup. Um, so if you can try to get the mechanism maybe down over here and hook this rod up while this is through here, um, you can get this done and then put it up into place. Or you can mount this to the door and then try to get the rod attached. I mean, there is finagling, there is ways you can do this before the glass is in, of course, and you get this rod through and you hook it up to the latch here. And there's a little, you know, fastener that's on the rod to keep that into place. So just make sure when you're breaking your doors down and you're stripping your car, you, you log everything, you take pictures of everything, and you see how things go back on, okay? So the next thing you're going to want to do is actually get your door mechanism in. So the, the actual window winder mechanism is what I mean. Uh, so you see this mechanism is a little bit different uh, than uh, the sedan mechanism. It's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit bulkier. And they use this style of mechanism, I, I, I believe, to the end. Um, if, not, if I'm mistaken on that one, please correct me. But um, as you know, like in, once you hit 65 on the Beatles, that whole mechanism changed to raise the window up and down. It was a tubular mechanism that kind of worked its way into the door and sat up top here. Um, but with the convertibles, they still kept that old style uh, window winding mechanism like they had in the 64 and earlier Beatles. Uh, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna have to get this mechanism in, okay, into the door. So you're gonna insert it this way into the door and try to rest this mechanism upwards okay so kind of like standing upwards all the way to the far end of the door okay towards say the the a pillar okay so you want that thing hiding over here for the time being because you have to insert your vent window now the vent window is going to insert from the top okay down into the door and that rod it's got a whole rod that it's got a bolt into the door here so this thing the channel comes all the way up, that's gonna have your felt in there, okay? And that has to go in. If your mechanism is in the door and you're standing down over here, you're gonna be conflicting with it and it's gonna interfere. So you have to uh, make sure you set that up by getting the window winding mechanism to the far end of the door here. Now in order to get this vent window in, this was a little problematic. What you notice here is, which I don't understand why they did this from factory, but down here you can see I have a nut on here right and there's a stud sticking out so the stud is like that long okay that has to poke through the door here why they didn't have a nut on the actual uh, uh, stem you know of the uh, the vent window frame is beyond me and just put a bolt in but because they have a stud sticking out 
in order to get this vent window into the door, I had to turn it. So the vent window actually had to turn about 45 degrees in order for me to insert it into this door. Now, you cannot insert this vent window frame into the door when you have the scrapers here. So what you're going to have to do is these scrapers are pretty self-explanatory the way they go in. I explain how to do these scrapers, the inside scrapers in another video. They just kind of hook down into under the door and then pull up and over. And there's a little flap that goes into a groove. See the flap there? This little flap goes into this groove. So you just got to pull it up and over. And then the bottom of this seal hooks in under the door. You'll see how that works. Just get some WD-4. It's a little persistent. And you, you know, the really only way to do this is with the glass out. So when you're inserting this, you cannot really have these seals in. If you want to set this seal up, <clears throat> the inside seal, that's fine. But you're just going to have to leave it out so you have room to insert this. This chrome outside scraper piece is gonna definitely have to be out. You can put in the vent window seal here, the base seal that goes from, uh, from here to the end. You can put that in, it does not really interfere because you, you could insert the post through this side. Now, there's three screws that hold this scraper in. One, two, and three. There's no screw that holds this piece in, which I don't know why because when they did, when you do that, when you don't put a screw in here, this new aftermarket piece tends to sit up, tends to not sit, you know, tight against the door. So what we did was, once we had our, you know, opening here, we inserted the vent post, and then I have another person hold the vent post up before we go all the way down, and I start screwing in the scraper. So as this vent post is being held up in the air, and you have somebody holding it, I started inserting the screws here. One, two, three. And those holes are already pre-drilled. They should already be holes into your doors for convertibles. The holes come pre-drilled when you buy the new scraper. Okay? But then as this vent was up, we drilled another hole, a pilot hole, through this way. And now there's a piece of metal, you know, that sticks down into the door with, it, with this scraper. And we put another screw in over here to hold this nice and tight up against the door. Because a lot of times, it, like I said, it doesn't sit right over here. I don't know why they didn't put another fastener there. You could use glue later on if you did miss this point. Um, but that's what we did. So, and then once you insert this big bulky bottom that's on down there, when you're inserting that through this door, then once it's through, then you can turn the vent window to its correct position, like you see here. Okay, so when it comes to inserting the glass, like you see here in the door, the, the glass on these uh, convertible beetles, unlike the sedan that inserts from this way, uh, you have to go down this way into the door. Now, the way they most likely did it in the factory, uh, in the Carmen factory, was they did not put any of these seals on yet, and they inserted the glass through the door and before it's hooked up on the mechanism it sits low enough where they have access to put the screws to hold the outside scraper in put the inside scraper in and whatnot but i wanted to get that one screw in over there against this vent post against the vent window so i had this scraper in while i was inserting the glass but i took this seal away okay and then put that back on so you know, it, it all depends on, you know, when you want to do certain things, but most likely you're probably a safer bet to do these scrapers when the glass is already in and at the way bottom. I was just being a little anal trying to get it fastened better on the outside of the door. So anyways, as we inserted the glass here, you got to look in and as you insert it, there's that track that goes in there, that rod that goes straight down, that bolts there. Okay, that's the track for the window to slide up and down into the door. Once you get that in, it's pretty, pretty easy. I mean, the window goes in pretty easily. Now, the issue we had, just like on the sedan, and I knew better than this, uh, I bought brand new felt uh, channels to go into the, uh, the vent post here. Okay, they and go all the way down. All right, so I bought new felt channels, and of course, once I hooked it all up and I was doing, winding the window up and down, it was so super duper tight in here that it was pushing the felt out. I don't know what's up with the new felts today on the market. They just don't work. 
Uh, they're just too thick and the glass just does not want to get into them. Um, so I made my own felt again and I have a video on making my own felt for a vent post. Uh, definitely check that out and you'll see what we did there. So we did the exact same thing. I had to take the whole door apart again and take this all out again to change the felt. So do this before you insert uh, the vent window. All right, so, uh, to it, so we inserted the glass. Now the glass sits lower and then once the glass sits lower, then you can get to your scrapers here and fasten all of this. And it's pretty self-explanatory with these scrapers, guys. It's not like the uh, sedan scrapers. There's no clips to pop in and think, uh, or anything like that. So. So once now you have your glass in, you can see that what you want to do is get the glass positioned on your track over here and positioned the other end of the glass going through the felt and moving up and down, okay? And just do it by hand. You can raise the glass up and down just to make sure everything's functioning like it should. Then once you have the glass set up in a decent position and now you're going to want to reach in, if you can, through that hole and reach in and start setting up the mechanism for the window winding, okay? Set that up and you're going to want to poke it through the hole there and there's those 10 millimeter bolts that have 6 millimeter threads and one bolt's there, one here, and then one right there. Okay, this is a 70 convertible, so um, if you have an earlier or a later, there might be slight differences, but for the most part, that's how that mounts. And then we also have this mounted as well. Make sure your rod for this pull, it hooks upward like that. I had it the other way last time. It was hooked down. Now there's a bend in this rod when it goes through this, pier this point right here. <clears throat> and sure enough, as I'm rolling the window up and down, it started to hit this rod and push it like that. And that was messing me up. So, got to make sure this is in the correct way because there's a bend out here. And if it bends towards the glass, it's going to interfere with the glass going up and down. Okay, so before you even want to bolt down the mechanism, a lot of times I, I leave them unbolted because you need to maneuver the mech because you have these blocks here. I don't know if you can see, they're like these nylon blocks. Okay, they can only go in, they go through the square opening right here. They only go in one way. If you turn it, it's not going to really insert because they're, it's not an exact square all the way around, so more of a rectangular shape. But I don't know if you can see, I'll try to get a light here so you can see this. There are grooves on those blocks, and those grooves got to go on the channel that you see here, those, the ends that stick out. So it has to slide correctly, okay, on, the, on this piece right here, on these, these lips here that I'm pointing to with this uh, top of the light. So um, you gotta make sure, you see, I'm trying to see if you can see that. Let me zoom in a little bit closer here. There you go. Okay, so that block inserts into that square opening over here. Okay, so you gotta do it for both sides. Okay, see that square opening? And on that block, there's, it's sliced, it has grooves on it, and it's got to go on that track. So just a quick recap, okay? So the door is, act, is, is all empty. you got to build the door. What you got to do first is set up this latch, right? And then the latch has the screw here, and then two screws here to hold this into place. You got that. You hook up your rod, and then mount your door opener here. Second is now the rod that goes through, if you took it out, which you should have if you had to take out, if you took out the latch, uh, the rod that goes all the way through the guide that goes down here and mounts to the door. Okay, you wanna keep things loose starting with this, okay? And keep things loose as you progress here other than the latch, okay? So then once you have that, then the next thing would be your vent window. So the vent window is going to go in, your post is going to poke through, again, cock it on a 45 degree angle because you'll see it will not fit in the door. It has to go in in a certain way and once that goes in, then you can turn the window back to where it's supposed to go. Now before uh, you put the vent window in, you could also put this seal in if you'd like. Uh, it's a lot easier to put that seal in with the vent window out, of course. Okay, so now your seals are still out here, 
Now you can insert your glass. You push your glass down into the door, put it, make sure it hooks up on the guide. You'll see on the glass frame, uh, uh, on, the, on the lift channel area, there's a guide, there's a slot to go into this guide to make it uh, move down there. But just finagle a little bit, it's pretty easy and it goes right down in. Once you drop the glass, the glass is going to sit lower in the door, then you can start putting your scrapers and your seals in here. Okay. Now also, uh, prior to putting the glass in, I apologize for that, you want to try to get your window mechanism in and shift it over to the end of the door so you have that accessible later on. You can get this going, you can get the mech in um, after the fact, but it's a little problematic with the vent post in place and stuff. So, you know, that's uh, one thing you're gonna wanna do is get that mech pushed over before you insert the vent post in the glass. So, and then once you hook everything up, like I showed you and, you, and you reach in and you get this mechanism on the glass here, you start bolting things down, okay? You can leave some things loose for the time being because you wanna make sure everything moves as it should. And then once it moves properly and you roll the window up and it lines up good here, you want it to line up with the top of the vent. Okay, then you can start bolting things, uh, tightening things down. Now there is an adjustment if your window sits lower or higher than the vent. There is an adjustment over here. If you can see this nut here, this bolt. See that right there? Okay, so that bolt has an adjustment on it and you can loosen that bolt Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. You see that bolt there? Here's the bolt. Now, usually it's got another nut underneath it. It's a, like a lock nut to position this up higher or lower if you had to. This one, we had to take the nut out because the window wasn't lining up good with the frame, the vent window frame. So, you see that mechanism hits that nut. Now, there's a positioning there. So, if you have to reposition the way the window is. Whoops. Okay, so you want this nice and straight. Now, if, if the window's sitting higher or lower, you adjust it with that nut, that bolt that's on the, uh, the mechanism. Here's the passenger side. You can see there's the nut that sits below the bolt here. That's just to lock it into place so it doesn't back off. You know, and again, you can rise this, you know, bolt this down lower or higher just to make sure your window is lined up. It's just a 10 millimeter wrench, so you get two 10 millimeter wrenches, crack these loose, and then you can adjust them. So then once you're all set up and your window goes up and down correctly as it should, just keep in mind these scrapers are going to pull in and out constantly when you're rolling the window up and down. So you might want to put some baby powder on them or some silicone lubricant uh, to let these scrapers move in and out all right. Because if you don't and they're dry, a lot of times there's, there's some film element that comes shipped on these uh, seals and they tend to grab and then if you're you know rolling the window up and down these they start to pull right out so that that kind of stinks but once you're all set up and you have everything functioning as it should just make sure to bolt and tighten everything down so you're going to tighten the nut there there's the 10 millimeter bolt headed threaded uh, I'm sorry six millimeter threaded bolt that that bolts into the the guide here you want to bolt that tighten that down course you want to bolt tighten down the mechanism here 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 10 millimeter tighten these down of course you want to tighten the vent post down down there and then also the vent post the vent tightens over here so you pull this flap away and you got the two uh, covers here the bolt covers here you're going to pop those off those are also 10, mil 10 millimeter hex bolts, six millimeter thread, okay, that threads into this, this frame here that goes into the door. Now, many times if you do break this door down and you break to take the vent window out when you're uh, stripping the car, you'll notice that the bolts are probably either broken in there and the nuts that are fastened inside this chrome frame, this housing that goes into the door, uh, they're also kind of messed up. So you might have to fabricate something there or figure something out. Uh, there's sometimes what you could do, which it could be a little problematic, is getting your hand up in here and you have two nuts on your hand and you can actually put some nuts in there. So just a nut and bolt to hold this together. But thankfully, uh, the square nuts that were in the frame here for the vent uh, angle here uh, were intact and in good condition. So 
I don't know if you can see these things. So I just popped these, these plastic pieces on. These are basically the hinge cover. Uh, I'm sorry, the hinge bolt covers here, just like that. So, and they just fit right in there. And then you got to get your door sealed to cover them there. So, okay. So I think I covered everything. Uh, it's early morning here at the shop. And uh, I think I covered everything. If I did miss anything, guys, please plug it in away down below in the comments. Um, and if you have any questions whatsoever on how to assemble this, uh, please let me know. Um, I know I didn't show you exact step by step, but I do have those other door videos for sedan that you can kind of get those basic techniques from and apply it here uh, to the convertible. It's just order of operations is a little bit different than a sedan, of course, and uh, the way things kind of hook up. So um, that's that tip, guys. <laughs> All right. Door building for convertibles. All right. Take care. Thank you.